Are you ready for circle time? What would you do if a robot came to tea? Just look at me and a robot you would see. A robot at attention, robots let's begin. Right arm, left arm, turn around, sit down. Nice job, kiddos. We are ready for circle time. We have some numbers we're gonna go over. You guys are getting so good at your numbers and I have a new thing with our numbers. We have gone through all of our numbers, zero to nine, and we are gonna start with something new after we do that. So when we trace our numbers, we use two fingers. So I'm gonna trace it here and then we're gonna make big ones in the air. Zero, zero, nice job. Ooh, nine. single number because they help us know how to write them. When we write numbers, when we write letters, we're usually starting at the top. When we write the number zero, we start at the top and this is the poem that goes with it. Go right around just like an O. That's how we make a zero. Let's do it again. Go right around just like an O and that's how we make a zero. Do in the air. Go right around just like an O, and that's how we make a zero. Zero. Next week we will learn the poem for number one, too. So there's a poem for every single number. It's kind of cool. All right. <clears throat> we are also talking about the letter Z this week. Across, down, across. Let's make a big one. Cross, down, across. Zebra, zipper, zoo, zero. Lots of good Z words. So I have an activity that I'd like to show you with Z. We're gonna wait just one moment. We're gonna wait one moment. So kiddos, this is an activity you can do at home. You're gonna need a tray, or you could use a casserole dish, or a pie tin, or something like that that can hold um, messy stuff like sand or something like that. Now, I use sand, because that's what we use at school. But if you're at home and you don't have sand, you could go out in the yard and get some dirt. You could use flour, like baking flour, or you could use sugar, too. Anything that you can put in a tray. And what we're gonna do, remember when we shake it, it erases, we're gonna make our Z. Z, Z. Here we go. Across, down, across. Z. Now, since Z is the end of the alphabet, guess what? That means you can practice so many different numbers and letters. So let's try P. P. Give it a shake. You could practice O. Or, like we just did with our number poem, you can make a zero. Go right around just like an O. That's how we make a zero. You could practice T. You could practice writing your name. Lots of different things. So you can do that at home. Ask mom and dad first so that you're not making a big mess. And also you need to be responsible with it. Because if you make a big mess, they might say you need to put it away. All right? All right, let's go back on over. So because we just are doing Z this week. Z is at the very end of the alphabet. That means we know all of the signs for all of the letters after Z. So let me show you Z. It's kind of funny. Z. You just write it in the air.
air. Is that funny? Z. So, starting with A, here we go. A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D, E, E, F, F, G, G, H, H, I, I, J, J, K, K, L, M, that one's tricky for me, M, M, N, N, O, A, P, P, that's hard for me to show you, a little harder to do it this way, P, Q, Q, R, R, S, S, T, T, U, A, B, V, W, W, X, X, Y, Y, Z, Z. Nice job. We know all of the signs for the letters. Nice work. All right. So we have our kookaburra song. We did this in music this week. Do you remember? Who remembers where the kookaburra lives? Does not live here in the United States. That's your hint. You remember. Australia and New Guinea and he makes that funny laughing sound that's why people think he's the birds laughing because it's like ah! it just makes a hilarious sound kookaburra we're gonna sing our kookaburra song kookaburra sits in the old gum tree merry merry king of the bushes he laugh kookaburra laugh kookaburra gay your life must be kookaburra sits in the old gum tree, eating all the gum drops he can see. Stop, kookaburra, stop. Kookaburra, leave some there for me. Kookaburra sits in the old gum tree, counting all the monkeys he can see. Stop, kookaburra, stop. Kookaburra, that's not a monkey, that is me. I love that one. All right. has three parts, has three parts, has three parts. Every insect has three parts. Head, thorax, abdomen. You guys remember that? So let's see. I am going to find the rest of these. <clears throat> now, you know an insect has three parts, head, thorax, abdomen. We also know what about its legs. How many legs does it have? Six. Every insect has six legs, has six legs, has six legs. Every insect has six legs. I can count them all. One, two, three, four, five, six. Every insect has antennae, has antennae, has antennae. Every insect has antennae. That is how they smell. We are going to use that song to do a project. So Kepler's going to bring the phone down so we can see. So you're going to get this in your folder, and it's called Insect, Not an Insect. You're going to have to figure out if it's an insect or if it's not an insect. I have cut these out already. So when you get this, you'll cut them out, and you'll glue them in insect or not an insect. So let me show you. I have this all cut out over here. We're going to go through them one by one. You will need a glue stick. Okay, this is the insect part. This is the not an insect. Ooh, grasshopper, you guys. What do you think, grasshopper? Insect or not an insect? Huh. Looks like he has six legs. Six legs, head, thorax, abdomen, and it has antennae. Must be an insect. Okay. Oh, this is kind of funny. What about a vulture? A vulture's a bird, you guys. Does a vulture have antennae or six legs? Absolutely not. So he's not an insect. We're going to put him over there. Not an insect. Ooh, a mosquito. I see six legs. I see a head, a thorax, and an abdomen, and I see antennae. Insect. 
you are going to, oh, I have to do this one because a lot of kids think it. Spider, you guys, is a spider an insect? Let's count the legs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight legs. Is that six legs? No. A spider is an arachnid, not an insect. So I don't want to do them all because I want you to think about them, but you're going to have all these pieces and you're going to organize them. Put them either as an insect or not an insect, and that will be in your packet. All right. We talked about this on our Zoom meeting last Friday. We've got this flower up here and we talked about these roots down below. Roots, what does that start with? Roots. R, roots. And we talked about the stem. And we talked about the oh so important leaves. don't have flowers, but this one does. And I read something so cool about flowers, you guys. I was thinking, why, why are flowers so beautiful? Did you know that they need to be bright and beautiful so that the bees are attracted to them? We need bees to pollinate them, and, and without bees, we wouldn't have plants. They wouldn't be passing the pollen back and forth gathering nectar. Their bees are so important to, to plants and they have to, they have to attract the bees so they become very colorful and gorgeous for the bees. All right, so we've got the flower, the stem, the leaves, and the roots. <clears throat> and we talked about photosynthesis in our Zoom meeting. Photosynthesis, that is how the plants make food because plants do not eat sandwiches. They do not eat pasta. Not like humans, right? So they take the sun, sun's light, photo means light, and they use the nutrients from the ground and they have something inside them called chlorophyll. If you watch the video that I sent about photosynthesis, you'll learn about chlorophyll and how, you know how plants are green, they get that green color from their chlorophyll. So they use that chlorophyll with the sun's light to make their own food. Then they pull the nutrients from the ground. It's awesome. I wanted to go a little bit into detail about the parts of the flower. So something that is pretty cool that I learned is we all know that these are leaves, but I was thinking, what about plants like Christmas trees? Do you know how they don't have leaves? They have needles. Or what about a cactus plant that has just a barb? A pokey thing, what about those? Well, I learned that those are just modified leaves. They actually do the same job as these kinds of leaves. Even on asparagus, the next time you eat asparagus, you'll see that it has little, what they call scales. Those are that plant's leaves. So even if it's not a leaf that looks like this, it's still doing the same job and, and getting that sunlight, using that chlorophyll, chloroform, and making its own food. So inside the stem, they have this stuff they call sap. And the sap is running up and down the plant. It's taking the nutrients for it, sucking up from the soil, taking it up, and it's bringing the nutrients to the leaves and to the flower. And at the same time, the sun is here and the water and the sun are mixing. And there is the, this shaft right here where the stem is, is, is kind of like a highway where there's cars going this way and that way. That's what's happening. There's sap with all kinds of cells that are going up and down the plant to make sure that every part of the plant is getting all of the nutrients and vitamins that it needs. That's pretty cool. Um, we also talked about on Zoom how if the plant has fruit, how the fruit keeps the seeds safe because if the seeds were just out in the open, birds would come and eat it or, you know, all kinds of things. So in order for the plant to reproduce, that means to make more plants, to spread more flowers, to make more watermelons, it has, it protects its seeds. And then when it rots, it rots and turns and goes back into the soil. Those seeds can grow new plants. Also something kind of crazy. If you think about birds eating 
berries or fruit off of a tree and then the seeds go into the birds and then the birds poop out their poop that has the little seeds from the plants and then guess what happens wherever that bird poops it may have flown far away and if it poops out and has the seeds in there a new plant's going to grow so the birds actually help spread new plants as well by eating the seeds and spreading them all over I thought that was pretty cool. Um, let's see. I want to see if you guys remember the three things that's needed for a plant to make its own food for that photosynthesis. I'm going to hold up my three fingers. We know <clears throat> that we need to water plants. So plants need water. They need what from the sky that's warm and shines out on them? Sunlight, right? Water and sunlight. And also, they need carbon dioxide from the air. Crazy thing is that plants clean our air. So, extra important. Not only do they give us food, but they clean the air and make the air like healthy for us to breathe. It's pretty amazing, which is why bees and plants are really important. All right, we are going to do our caterpillar poem. Are you ready? I saw a fuzzy caterpillar crawling on the ground. And then before I knew it, it was nowhere to be found. I searched for him, but he was gone. And I asked my mother why. She said that he was resting to become a butterfly. Okie dokie. I have a book for you. And I'm going to have Kepler stop the film and get all ready. I'm going to read you The Curious Garden. It's by Peter Brown. The Curious Garden. Hmm, what's it mean to be curious, you guys? It means you wonder about things and you want to find things out. There once was a city without gardens or trees or greenery of any kind. Most people spent their time indoors. As you can imagine, it was a very dreary place. Not very beautiful. However, there was one boy who lived, oh, he loved being outside. Even on drizzly days while everyone else stayed inside, you could always find Liam happily splashing through his neighborhood. It was on one such morning that Liam made several surprising discoveries. He was watching around the old railway, as he did from time to time, when he stumbled upon a dark stairwell leading up to the tracks. The railway had stopped working ages ago. Well, that's a good thing, because he wouldn't want to play on railroad tracks. <clears throat> and since Liam had always wanted to explore the tracks, there was only one thing for that curious boy to do. Liam ran up the stairs, pushed open the door, and stepped out onto the railway. The first thing he saw was a lonely patch of color. Wildflowers and plants were the last things he had expected to find up there. But when he took a closer look, it became clear that the plants were dying. They needed a gardener. I can see the plants right here. They're kind of turning brown. Liam may not have been a gardener, but he knew what he could, he could do to help. So he returned to the railway the very next day and got to work. The flowers nearly drowned, and he had a few pruning problems, but the plants were patient, and they waited while Liam found better ways of gardening. As the weeks rolled by, Liam began to feel like a real gardener, and the plants began to feel like a real garden. Most gardens stay in one place, but this was no ordinary garden. With miles of open railway ahead of it, the garden was growing restless. It wanted to explore. The tough little weeds and mosses were the first to move. They popped up further and further down the tracks and were closely followed by more delicate plants. Over the next few months, Liam and the Curious Garden explored every corner of the railway. Look at this, you guys, it's getting a lot bigger. <coughs> After spending his spring and summer and autumn with the garden, Liam's time on the railway was finally interrupted by winter. 
Heavy blankets of snow fell on the city that season, and for the first time since he'd been become a gardener, Liam could not wait for the plants. Oh yeah, because the plants are all covered up by the snow. Rather than waste his winter worrying about the garden, Liam spent it preparing for spring. After three cold months, the snow finally began to melt, and Liam rolled his new gardening gear over to the railway. He's got his wheelbarrow full of his tools. Winter had taken a toll on the garden. What does that mean, kiddos? Taken a toll. That means that it was a hard season. The plants were kind of beat up a little bit. But thanks to Liam's planning, his handy new tools, and a little help from the sun, the plants soon awoke from their winter sleep. The garden had always wanted to explore the rest of the city, and that spring it was finally ready to make its move. Once again, the tough little leaves and mosses set out first. They popped up further and further from the whale railway and were closely followed by the more delicate plants. Look, you guys, they're starting to hang down. It's like they're spilling over. The garden was especially curious about old forgotten things. Do you see this truck here? There's plants growing out of this truck. A few plants popped up where they didn't belong, like on a stop sign. Others mysteriously popped up all at once. But the most surprising things that popped up were the new gardeners. So you can see on the tops of the buildings, people are making gardens. You can see this downtown in Seattle too. Some of the buildings downtown have gardens up on top. People are coming out and starting to enjoy the spring weather. Many years later, the entire city had blossomed, but of all the new gardens, Liam's favorite was where it all had began. Look at how big the tree is now, you guys. It's grown so much. Look at all these gardens. The whole city's green. It's gorgeous. Now, even though we're not in school, I bet you can tell that spring is here. Lots of people have been working outside. The sun is shining. Things are starting to sprout and grow. And I am going to tell you that our beans that we put in the bag, when we talked on Friday at the Zoom meeting, they hadn't changed, but something is happening and I'm going to take a picture of it and send it to you in the email. All right, I will see you guys later. Bye.